Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I am so excited to bring you four DIYs for Try It Tuesday. This is a challenge with an open playlist hosted by Unicorn Dust Designs and co-hosted by Indie Annie Jones. These are two of my favorite crafters, so I was so excited to join in today. So what it is, is you are to recreate some DIYs from your favorite YouTubers. So that's exactly what I did. But first, if you would be so kind to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. I have a lot of content coming up and I would not want you to miss a thing. Then join me on Facebook and Instagram and join my crafting community. I would love for you to be a part of it. All right, let's get started. The first DIY that I tried came from She's So Crafty on YouTube. I think that her designs are amazing and she is so good at replicating other stores and recreating all of their items and of course at a budget and they are so awesome. She came up with this picket fence two tier tray and when I saw it, I knew I had to try it because look how cute it is. So I decided to give it a try. So first I started off with these two box signs that I got from the Dollar Tree. One is obviously larger than the other one. Now D, she had them both the same size, but I didn't have two of the same size. So I obviously just used what I had. So I decided to use the laundry one and then that little smaller one. And the first thing I did was paint the bigger one with the white chalk paint from Waverly because that was black. So I really wanted to have it all white. So I gave that two coats of the chalk paint. Once that was all dry, I took these jumbo craft sticks that I got from Walmart and I measured to the bottom of the box. Then I went ahead and cut off the curved parts on either end and it happened to be eight inches long. So then I measured four inches, which would be half, and I cut each one of those sticks in half. Now for the big box, I could fit four of those pieces on each, each side. So I cut out 16 pieces of the craft stick. Once I had all those cut out, I did the exact same thing and measured to the smaller box. And this, I needed three to go on each side, so I needed 12 of the craft stick pieces. Once all of my craft sticks were cut out, I took the tops and I cut them at an angle to make a picket fence. And I did this with each one of the craft sticks. Now at first I just kind of eyeballed it and then once I got the shape I liked, I just used that as a template to cut all the rest of my sticks. Here is what the craft sticks should look like once they are all cut into picket fence. Now, I took the craft sticks and starting at each end, I hot glued one of the sticks on each side. I started at the end so I knew how to judge it in the middle. And then I did end up measuring it and it was one inch from the one on the end. Now I didn't measure going all the way around but I just wanted it to be somewhat lined up on each side. So I just kind of eyeballed it but then threw my ruler up there just to make sure. But I did this until I had four picket fence pieces on each side. I did make sure to clean up any of the hot glue that squeezed from underneath. That way it was a nice clean edge. After my bigger box was done, I grabbed my smaller box. Now before I started hot gluing the pieces on, I wanted to paint the bottom of the box because it was kind of going to be seen. So I just took some white Waverly chalk paint and gave it a coat of that. Once 
Once my box was dry, I took those picket fence pieces again and just did the same thing I did at the bigger box and I started from the outside ends and then put the middle one down. And I did this until the whole box was covered. After that, I took another jumbo craft stick and I measured on each side of the box and then I cut them down. Now you do not have to cut off the curved edges because it is going to be hidden once you glue it. So you just want to cut it down any way you want and then we're going to use that to create the post on each side of the box. So then you're going to glue one on all four sides of your box on both of the boxes. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that all of the top posts line up with each other. Now for the smaller box, I was actually able to get two posts out of one craft stick. So I only needed two craft sticks to cover the top of that one. While you watch me cut these, I just want to take this time to welcome you to my channel. If you're new here, I am so happy you joined me today. And if you're returning, thank you so much for all of your wonderful support. My page has exploded in the last couple of weeks and I am loving from hearing from all of you and for sharing all of my DIYs and ideas. So thank you, thank you, thank you for this tremendous support. I truly appreciate it. all the top posts were glued on both of my boxes I painted each one with Waverly chalk paint in white now I did make sure to use a smaller brush for this because I wanted to make sure to get into every nook and cranny you want to make sure to get the inside the outside you can do the bottoms too although I'm going to cover the bottoms but just make sure it's completely covered in the paint after that, I took my miter saw and miter box and a handle from a plunger. Now at this point, I had already taken the plunger part out and taken the tag off, and I cut off a five inch piece of that plunger handle. I did forget to cut off the little curved part of the end of that handle, so I just quickly went ahead and cut that off. And at this point, my camera completely turned, so I apologize about that. Next, I took my sanding block and I sanded the ends that I had cut, and then I also painted the rod in that white Waverly chalk paint as well. If you've been following me for a while, you know I love to distress. So I took my antique Waverly wax and then my favorite distressing brush and I just dry brushed the wax all over both boxes and the rod of my picket fence. After that, I sanded it all down to help it blend in. Now you can see there I did not paint the insides. Be sure to do that because you can definitely tell when you go to display it. I just wasn't even thinking about it. Next, I took my wood glue that I actually got from the Dollar Tree and then I mixed it with some hot glue and hot glued the rod down in the middle of the bigger box. Then I added some wood glue and hot glue up top and added my smaller box. Now here's my suggestion. I would definitely let the bottom completely set first before adding the top box. I made the mistake of putting it on right after the first one and it was just not stable enough. And you can see that it started tilting and, and falling over. So I then decided to add some 
tumbling tower blocks around this that way it held it up and then I let it set overnight and it worked out perfectly and as you can see there I'm just adding a whole bunch of hot glue I really love how this came out it is so cute to display little things and I want to thank Dee from she's so crafty for the amazing inspiration what do you think For the next DIY, I got my inspiration from The Crafty Couple on YouTube. They made this really cute lantern out of a box and dowel rod, so I thought I'd give it a try. So first, I started off with this box from the Dollar Tree, and I used my hot hair dryer and my scraper to try to get that cloud off of there. It was 3D, so I needed to get it off so it sat level on my table. This took a little longer than what I wanted, but eventually I got it off. Then I sanded the bottom so it was all smooth. Next, I took this little ladybug I wanted to show you that it actually sucks up sand. It's a little vacuum. I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description box below, but look how cute it was. I got it for my birthday. Well, I got it for myself for my birthday last week. <laughs> so then next, I went ahead and peeled off the tags on the inside. And again, I had to use my hair dryer and my scraper to get that sucker off. I don't know why they plaster these tags on these signs, but they do but eventually it did come off. After all my prep work was complete, I took these 12 inch dowel rods that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut them down in eight inch pieces and I needed four. Now to cut them down, I did use my miter shears and I'll go ahead and leave the link to that in the description box below as well. And don't forget, if you ever see any of the supplies I'm using, I usually have the link in the, in the description box. And you're gonna see here that I am using a new Sherbonder glue gun that I also got for myself. Actually, my mom got it for me for my birthday, but I may have had something to do with it, but I will also leave that link in the description box below too. And I love it because it is actually a detail point, so it's much skinnier, so it gets into smaller places. So I am loving using all of my new things. After I cut all my dowel rods down, I went ahead and sanded each end. That way they were nice and smooth. After I vacuumed up all the little sand with my little ladybug, I took my new hot glue gun and I hot glued each of the dowel rods in the corners of that box. Next, I measured the width between the two rods, and it just so happens that the part that I cut off was an almost exact match, so I just decided to use those. Now, depending on the box you use, you're going to have to measure and just figure out the length between those, because you're gonna have to cut them down for, for it to fit your box. So I just went ahead and I hot glued a square on top of the dowel rods. Now, for the last piece, I actually came up short. My last dowel rod was a little short, so I did actually have to cut a new one down. But I just placed all these dowel rods on the top of the straight up and down rods. Just as a reminder, if you're loving what you're seeing today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. It also tells YouTube that you're loving my content and that you would like to see more. So it'll run continuously in your feed.
After all my dowel rods were in place, I reinforced each of the corners with some hot glue. Now, it doesn't look pretty right now, but I am planning on painting this, so you really won't see the hot glue because it'll all blend in. But I would just much rather feel comfortable knowing I reinforced it. Next, I took the six inch dowel rods that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I didn't have to cut these down or anything, and I hot glued these in the corners going up at an angle. The easiest way to do this is to put hot glue glue on two of the corners across from each other and then put two dowels facing each other meeting at the top and throw some hot glue on there too and then just letting it dry then you saw I kind of just sat there and waited and then I added my other two dowel rods now I'm so sorry it got cut off at the top but you can see a whole bunch of hot glue there at the top next I took a 20 millimeter bead and I glued that on the top but I made sure that the holes were on the sides after that, I took some floral wire and I cut off a little piece and then I formed it into the shape of a circle, looped it through my bead, and then I hot glued that into the bead so that the ends are hidden. And I do apologize, I am out of frame again here. I am just still trying to work with my video angle, so I apologize, but I'm going to show you what it should look like right here. After that, I gave this entire thing two coats of white Waverly chalk paint. After it was painted and all dried, I took my Waverly Antique Wax again and my favorite distressing brush, and I just did the same thing we did on the first project, and I just brushed it right over my lantern. Now, I made sure to follow the the brush stroke so I went back and forth left to right on the sides and then up and down on the dowel rods going up and down and then side to side so I did make sure to follow the direction that each piece was going I also distressed the little circle at the top to the little handle then after I had all of my distressing done I was completely done with this project and I absolutely loved how this came out you can I stuck a candle and some greenery in it and I love it Thank you to the crafting couple for this amazing idea. What do you think? My next DIY was inspired from Four Quarter Crafts. I absolutely love what she creates, and when she created this fairy garden, I knew I had to do it for my little four-year-old, and she loves it. So mine is not gonna look exactly like hers because I wanted to use what I already had. So I started off with this little pot. Actually, it's not little, it's actually pretty big, but I did get it from the Dollar Tree, and I gave it two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. I took this galvanized tin that I got from the Dollar Tree, and by using 100% acetone, I took off all the writing. Now this, you could probably skip because I ended up painting this anyways. I had a different idea, um, but it didn't end up working, so you could probably actually skip this step. But then after I got all the wording off, I went ahead and gave this two coats of the Waverly chalk paint in white so it matched the other pot. Once my big pot was done drying, I traced the top of it on a foam board. Now obviously this foam board is used and it doesn't matter, it can be used and it's painted on, it's just going to go in the top of the pot to give it some height. So I traced it and then I took my little utility knife and cut it out. Now, in the other DIY, she used a candlestick to give this height. However, I didn't have a candlestick. But what I did have was this pack of three plastic cups. So I decided to use that to put inside the pot to hold this foam board 
up. So then I went ahead and put the foam board in and I didn't even hot glue it. I just set it in there. Next, I went ahead and put my smaller pot on top of the foam board. Now I did trace around it, but you can skip that step too. Because what I ended up doing was taking these sheets of moss and I hot glued these sheets all over the top of that foam core board. That way it looked like grass. I want to apologize for the angles of all these videos. When things are taller like this, it's harder for me to video because of the angle of my tripod. So you might see a little bit of mess. And then also, I was trying to cut out my outfit because <laughs> when I craft, I don't look my best. I'm just going to be honest. So I really was trying to cut myself out. And I guess I didn't realize when I was doing this how much of myself I was actually recording. So I apologize all that about all that. But basically, like I said, I just went ahead and trimmed these down and hot glued them to the top to create some grass. Now in the original fairy garden, she used moss. But like I said, this is going to my four-year-old daughter, so I really had to be mindful about what she would be playing with and that would make a mess. <laughs> So next I took these little wood pieces that I got from Hobby Lobby and I actually got them at 40% off. So the bag, uh, it came with a ton of them and it, it was very inexpensive. I was very happy. So I just laid them out how I like them and then once I had them all in the position that I like, I went ahead and hot glued them down. Now you can see in the middle that I stacked, I put a big one down and then I put a smaller one down. I did that to create steps just like in the original fairy garden. That way. It helps the fairy get into her little fairy door that we're about to add. Now at this point my bucket was not glued down on top. I just put it there so I could arrange all of the wood pieces around it. So now I need to decide how high the bucket needs to be so the fairy door rests on the front of it. So what I did was I used some more wood pieces and just stacked it up. And then once I had the height I needed, I went ahead and hot glued the fairy door on top of that little wood piece, the top step, and then to the front of the pail. Now before I started creating this, I took my daughter to Dollar General. You can always go to Dollar Tree too, but I took her to Dollar General and let her pick out some fairy garden pieces to add to her little fairy garden. So she picked out a wishing well, a little clothesline, mushroom clothesline. She picked out a gnome and then she picked out an actual fairy. So at this point, I just went ahead and decided where I wanted everything. Now that little welcome sign and that little pot of plants you see up in the corner, that came in a three pack from the Dollar Tree. Here's a fun fact. For my daughter's second first birthday, it was actually fairy themed. So I have a ton of this stuff in storage <laughs> but I had to go rebuy all my stuff because I don't have access to it right now but that's okay we're just adding to our collection I guess but I just arranged all these pieces now I did glue these down because they are breakable and again this is going to my four-year-old if she was a little older I might not have glued them down because then she can kind of move them around and everything but I did not have that much trust in her <laughs> she definitely would break all these pieces but I thought that this part was so cute and you can't tell, but she is standing there next to me telling me where to put some of these things. So I just think that this is so cute. There she is. She kept popping in and out so, to check on my progress. <laughs> so next I just took some greenery and I randomly placed them so it looked like it was just overgrown and it was just whimsical. And then I did the same thing with flowers. I added different colored flowers. I really wanted this to be colorful and bright and fun for her. Just a lot of fun to look at. So I went ahead and just added some flowers and greenery all around the base of my fairy garden.
So after I got everything in place up top, I just felt like the bottom was just so plain. So I took my sanding block and I sanded little pieces of the white paint. That way, a little bit of the lime green color showed through because I wanted this to kind of look old and I don't know, just kind of worn. So you can see there where I'm just randomly hitting some spots of the pot. Now, of course, I would have done this before I stuck everything on top. So I had to carefully do this, but I just really thought it needed something. Then after that, I took some stickers from the Dollar Tree and I spelled out Amelia's Fairy Garden right on top because again, I just felt like it needed something. But I also couldn't add too much that she could pull off or destroy. <laughs> Let's just be honest, she's four. So I just wanted to um, make it kind of simple but yet cute. After I had all my lettering on, I went ahead and coated it with a layer of Mod Podge to protect all the letters and help them stay down. Before I put Mod Podge over it though, I did sand it so that way those looked rustic and worn as well. Then to complete this, I grabbed some fairy lights that I actually had from Valentine's Day and that's why they're pink. But I just put them all over the little accessories and the flowers just to add a little touch of fun. I also included some butterfly stickers to the white pot up top just because, you know, I did want this to be kid friendly and just like I said, just really bright and colorful. But I absolutely loved how this came out. I think it's super cute and my daughter loves it too. Thank you to Four Quarter Crafts for this amazing, amazing inspiration. What do you think? And there's my daughter with her new fairy garden. Fun fact, after this picture was taken, she dropped the fairy and the head popped off. <laughs> oh well. So for my last DIY for Try It Tuesday, I got my inspiration from DIY Home and Crafts. Her name is Jazz and she is brilliant. She's a genius when it comes to crafting. But she made this really texturized base and when I saw it, I knew I had to try it. So I started off with a glass vase that my mom actually had in the basement that she was not using anymore. And the first thing I did was, of course, wipe it down. It was a little dusty and musty, so I just cleaned it off a little bit with a baby wipe. And then I made sure that it was completely dry before I moved on to the next step. Next, I took this tube of caulk, and you will need one whole tube for this. Well, at least my vase was pretty big, so I needed one whole tube. And I simply just poured that caulk all over every side of this vase. So at first, I went in, and it really was not coming out very well. So then I clipped the top of it and squeezed it, and it worked out so much better. Then to spread it around, I just used a craft stick, and I just made sure that the entire surface was covered with the caulk. So I did make sure to put on a nice even layer and then I took my craft stick and I drew lines going up on my vase and this is where the texture comes in. So you can see there that now it has ridges and I just repeated this around the whole vase.
After all my sides were covered, I went ahead and let this set overnight to make sure that it was completely dry. Once it was dry, I took my Waverly white chalk paint and gave this one coat of that. Then after that was dry, of course I had to give it my rustic touch. So I took my favorite distressing brush and my antique Waverly wax and just dry brushed that all over my vase. And look at that texture. I absolutely love how the raised little edges came up and they ended up darker and I really loved that. Now after I went over it with the wax, I did take that white brush that I used to paint it and I kind of dry I brushed over the brown just to doll it down a little bit and to blend everything in. Of course I didn't want to sand it because I didn't want to accidentally sand down the ridges. But So I just used my white paint to doll down any darker spots. And I really thought that this looked like wood and I just thought that this came out really, really cute. Now in Jazz's vase, she actually did speckles. So she kind of put little speckles everywhere on her vase and I love that look too. But because of my wavy lines, I just thought it kind of looked like wood. So I just stuck with the Waverly Antique Wax and I loved how it turned out. It's funny because I actually started off lighter and then then as I was mixing the brown and the white and kind of going back and forth, I actually decided I liked it a little darker. So I decided around the edges, around the top and the bottom to make those a little darker and then I brushed on the bottom corners to make it look really rustic and worn. I really love how this looked antique and, and the texture is just amazing. I think this was such a great idea and really how simple was that? And honestly, this cost me $1 for the tube of the caulk because we already had the vase and of course I have all the paints. So for such a high end look, it definitely is not a high end price tag. I love this and I cannot wait to style it. Thank you to Jazz at DIY Home and Crafts for this amazing and brilliant DIY idea. What do you think? I had so much fun recreating some of my favorite YouTubers DIY. I think it's amazing when we can all come together and inspire each other to try each other's crafts and to recreate each other's ideas and visions and I just loved how all of these turned out. Obviously I had a little flower theme going on here and I guess I had a rustic theme <laughs> going on here too but I guess that's all my videos because I'm such a rustic girl. But you're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I definitely have to say the fairy garden was mine because my daughter loves playing with it and she actually adds a lot of her little princesses and little little people to the little fairy garden as well and she just is having so much fun with it. And she shows all of our family that comes over and she's just so proud of it. And that makes me really happy. I wanna thank Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs for coming up with this amazing Try It Tuesday idea and for hosting it. And thank you to Indiana Jones for co-hosting today's challenge. And a huge thank you to She's So Crafty, The Crafty Couple, Four Quarter Crafts, and DIY Home and Crafts by Jazz for giving me all of these amazing ideas and inspiring me to try my own spin on them. I want to thank everyone so much for joining me. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps my channel to grow. I hope that you got some amazing ideas and 
you're inspired to create your own things as well. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!